Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah! This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you doing? I'm excited that we are connected once again on this special platform at this time. And I especially welcome you to today's special episode of our favorite Glad Devotion. This is the place where you receive the truth of God's word to build you up and make you effective in the kingdom. And as a whole, the whole body of Christ, we are coming in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This week, has been an awesome week. We started dealing with the subject of self-assessment. I made it clear that for some people, this looks like a business topic and it doesn't look something spiritual. But you know, it's biblical. The business people actually picked it up from the Bible and made it business-like to the extent that you think it is business and not spiritual. But according to what the Bible told us in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, um, we realize that it's important to examine yourself in the faith. That means to test yourself, to scrutinize yourself, assess yourself, to see whether you are genuine or you are meeting up to the expected standard. Self-assessment is a biblical practice. If you are not involved in it, you are missing out on something prescribed by God that you are not engaged in, which will make you not succeed. Go back to self-assessment. We looked at the power of self-assessment in our previous episode and we realized that self-assessment is so powerful in our lives because it helps us to achieve our intended goals. For those who have resigned to the life of being in the common people or the masses, they don't think about goals. But let me tell you, if you want to be a real success, if you want to move out of the brackets of the ordinary and be in the bracket of the successful, you must step into a place where you begin to have goals and targets in life, in every area of your life. And when you have targets, you will know what it means to assess yourself to achieve those targets. Self-assessment helps you do that. And self-assessment also helps you to attain high levels of success in life. Then we went ahead to look at four ways that self-assessment helps a person to achieve these two things. Go to that video or audio uh, the emancipator and get those four points for yourself. Today we have to move forward. Father, in the name of our dear Lord Jesus, we bless you for this city, we bless you for this time of fellowship in your word. Thank you, the life and spirit are permeating into our being and making us new in another angle in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, today our topic is assess your spiritual growth. Assess your spiritual growth. I mentioned it in the previous episode that every area of your life that you really desire to achieve your goals must be subjected to self-assessment. So yes, your entire life is one and there must be a personal life assessment. But that personal life assessment 
is a combination of your assessment in various areas and various things you are involved in as part of the activities of your life. For instance, if you are married, you should have self-assessment in your marriage. Are you a husband? Are you a father? Are you a minister? Are you a carpenter? Are you a farmer? Are you a student? Are you following this? You must do self-assessment in every area of your life. If you find that somebody is doing very well in some areas and is failing in others, he is not paying attention to those areas because he has not assessed himself to see whether he's doing well. Let me tell you, it is very easy to get caught up in the hope that activities mean success. But be warned, activities do not always translate to success. Being busy is not equal to making progress. Being busy is not equal to making progress. If you do not subject your life to self-assessment, you will be deceived by your busyness to think that you are making progress. I've taught this before. That you have prayed for one hour does not mean that you have really communed with God for one hour. Many times somebody has prayed for one hour, but for over 40 minutes his mind is moving up and down on things that he's worrying about. And only 20 minutes that he made contact with divinity. It means that out of the one hour, he prayed for only 20 minutes. So in everything, even in your prayer, in your Bible study, if you don't assess yourself to see what real progress you are making, you'll be deceived by the fact, oh, I pray every day, I read my Bible every day, I watch the Good Life Devotion every day. Even you're watching the Good Life Devotion, if you don't assess yourself to ask, today, what have I learned? This week, what have I gotten? The fact that you have been watching every day doesn't mean you are really growing. Hmm. If you don't assess yourself very well, you may be watching a good devotion for a whole two, three years, and then we meet you and ask you one question, and your speech hasn't changed. And yet somebody who watches or listens or reads this message for three months, everyone gets transformed. You need to assess yourself in every area. So today we're talking about assess yourself or assess your spiritual growth. In other words, subject your spiritual growth to self-assessment. Our main scripture is Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. And it says that, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Again, you read the King James and look like you're not catching it. Let me go to more modern English. Let's go to NIV. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. <laughs> Did you see that? It says, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need elementary truths of God's word. All over again. <laughs> you need milk, not solid food. Let me take it in another version so you can get it. Because it's so self-explanatory. Let's quickly launch into the Living Bible. They combined uh, verse 12 and 13 to make it clear. They said, you have been Christians a long time now. <laughs> And you ought to be teaching others. But instead, you have dropped back to the place where you need someone to teach you all over again the very first principles of God's word. What happened to these Christians? When they joined church, they just joined Christian activities, kept on growing, kept on growing. In terms of their duration in being in church, but they were never maturing in their understanding of spiritual truth. So at a point, this supervisor overseer came and looked at them and said, ah, at this time, you should be teaching at them, but when we examine what you know, we need to teach you all over again the basic things. What happened to these Christians? They never assessed their spiritual growth. They thought that because they were long in church or they were having great titles meant that they grew in the knowledge of God's word. No. But 
How can someone prevent this from happening to him or her? By doing his spiritual growth assessment. So we're talking about assess your spiritual growth. I'm reading what the man's better we have. He said that, I've been teaching my generation a lot about the need for spiritual growth because a lot are more focused on early expectations from God than his expectation concerning their spiritual growth. If you have watched the Gula Devotion for some time, you will note how I keep emphasizing your personal spiritual growth. This is intentional because our observation of a large number of our brethren in the body of Christ is that the practice of Christianity is more inclined towards what God should give us, what we can do to have God answer our prayers. What can we do to have God help us to achieve what we want to achieve? So it's more of let us pray, let us discover, let us find principles to get something from God. Not many are actually concerned about what does God want us to lay for? And the point is, as long as your Christianity is about what God can do for you to achieve your goals, you're not going to bother about spiritual growth. Because it doesn't take spiritual growth to get results from God. All it takes is another Christian who can help you or discovering some spiritual principles to achieve some spiritual results. So many like to dig more around how they can get solution to their problems. So God is much more of a pharmacy shop. They care less about what God thinks and plans about them, but they are more concerned about how they can get God to deliver their goods. But that is a serious misplacement of focus in the direction of spiritual things according to what the Bible teaches. Listen, if you are a child of God, it is high time you understood that you are not just one of a natural creation that happened. That is why the classification of humans among higher animals is, is a great indictment on God's integrity for mankind. To think that you are just another living beast who will feed on some things and die and go, or another living beast that will evolve, or you evolve that from some animal and you will re-evolve into something of another animal kind or whatever. <laughs> it's a serious deception. You are an intelligent being brought into life by an intelligent God for a definite purpose. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, let's read it so they can see something. It says that, for I'm reading the Living Bible because I'm still there, and I says that, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. The Almighty God speaking to you says, I know the plans I have for you. Question is, are you aware that God has a plan for you? Does it exist in your repertoire of personal considerations? The thing that you live and think about. Does the fact that God has a plan for my life, does it form one of the things you think about? And have you ever thought about what possibly could that plan be for me? In the same Jeremiah, if you go to chapter 1 and you read the fifth verse, it says that I knew you before you were formed within your mother's womb. Before you were born, I sanctified you and appointed you as my spokesman to the world. This was not just limited to Jeremiah. 
Similar things are said of John the Baptist, a man sent from God. Every one of us was intentionally sent with a condensation of a certain dimension of God's glory to display in life. When you come into this life and you get entrapped into the pursuit of what has been defined by humanity as the standard, you have become a casualty of life. You ought to know that there is a plan for your life. And busy yourself about discovering that plan and living to fulfill it. It is only when something like that dawns on you that there is a plan for my life. And now you begin to interact with God to find out that plan for your life. Then issues of spiritual growth becomes important. But as long as your life is okay, I feel I want to do this business, right? Okay, let me see how I can succeed. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me see which man of God that I, I can go to that can touch me or that can give me some oil or that can bless me and then my business will work. Uh huh. Then you look and look on TV and land on once. Okay, I'm going to see that man of God. Then probably you carry a seed, amount of money. Man of God, I've come to see you. I know. When Saul was going to see Samuel, so is there a man of God? Let us take some seed. You took the seed there, then they bless you, then you come, and then the business is working. Ah, ah, you are doing well. The next time, oh, I think I want to travel to another country. Who can I go so that when he blesses me, the door will open? Then you look around. Oh, which man of God? Ah, one, two, three, four, five. Then you find one. Then you go. Then they bless you. You see, it's like you don't care what God thinks about your life. It's about what you want and how you can use God. So with this kind of life, business is working, traveling is working, things are working anytime you connect to God. So you, it will not even dawn on you that there's some growth to do in the spirit. So your highest Christianity will be, I belong to this church, I go to church Sunday, I take my Bible, yes, what is the pastor saying? Huh? Sometimes when the pastor is about to pray, you are gone. Because when you need something, you have an anointed somebody somewhere to go and get. So the message coming is not even important to you. When I'm talking about principles of growth in the spirit, it will mean nothing. So for many people, spiritual growth doesn't mean anything. But I thank God for us on the Gulai devotion. As a family, I'll keep sharing these things with us. Our life is much more than this earth. There is a plan for your life. And then spiritual growth becomes important when you discover that there is this plan. The reason is this. we we'll put it that. Wonderful brethren, let it become your living consciousness that God desires and demands your spiritual growth in Christ because that is the only way you can divinely function and achieve his plan for your life. So when you, it comes to achieving God's plan for your life, you need to grow because without growth, you cannot be entrusted with certain things. We put it that until you grow spiritually, you cannot handle certain divine assignments. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says that an heir, as long as he remains a babe, he cannot differ from a slave, even though he's a master of all. He's an heir. That means that he's supposed to be the one to reign in place of the father. But he cannot function like that, even if the father is dead. He cannot function like that until he's trained to grow up. So there are some assignments that God will not even speak to you about even though you were made for them if you don't mature. Because to be told of such assignments will destroy your life. So when you don't mature spiritually, you cannot function and fulfill your purpose. Now, where does self-assessment come in? When you become conscious that I'm here for a purpose and to achieve that purpose, I must grow spiritually, then it will move you to assess yourself in terms of your spiritual growth. For instance, talking about this year, 2023, as a family on the Gula Devotion, we started with some things. You can ask yourself these basic questions. From January till now, this year, have you grown spiritually? You've been going to church. We are in September now. You have gone to church for all these months. Can you say, I have grown how can you know you have grown if you are not assessing yourself? If you take it for granted that just because you are going to church every Sunday and every midweek and all that you are growing, you'll be surprised that after some years, 
like they told the Hebrew brethren, he says, at this time you ought to be teachers, but somebody has to reteach you again of the elementary principles. You have stayed so long in church and yet you can't even cast out the devil. Stay so long in church and you can't even put a principle of faith to work. Why? You were never assessing yourself to see whether you grew. So from January to now, have you grown spiritually? Number two, what spiritual targets have you achieved? Did you have any targets at all? If you were following the Gula devotion from the beginning of the year, we had some targets. Follow through now. Go and look at them and ask, have I achieved any of my targets? Number three, what spiritual transformations have taken place in you? The way you think, have you become better? The way you understand things of God, has it become better? The way you pray, the way you study the word, your commitment to spiritual things, have these things become better? What transformation has taken place? Then, you can also ask, what divine activities can you now engage in better than the beginning of the year? For instance, maybe from the beginning of the year, you couldn't pray for 30 minutes. Can you say now, I can pray for 30 minutes? Maybe from the beginning of the year, you were going to church once in a while. Can you say now, I am regular at uh, attending fellowship meetings? Maybe before January, anytime you took your Bible, you didn't even understand anything and it was boring. Can you say now, when I take my Bible, I enjoy reading my Bible? What is it that you can do better now that you couldn't do as of January this year? This is how you assess yourself. You must assess your spiritual growth. If you don't, this year will pass before you like a, a movie. And 2023 would have just been one of the numbers added to the years you've lived on the earth and it never added to your spiritual progress. That should never be your portion. This is why God sent me at this particular time. We are just about stepping into the final quarter of 2023. You must do something. By the time we hit 31st of December, you should grow. You should mature. You should make progress. You should experience some transformation. Oh, my gosh, Adi Baraba. God loves you. God really wants you to attain his level that he has for you. God wants you to be a real success in the kingdom. That is why he's bringing these kind of teachings your way. Don't put them aside. Get these teachings. Watch them. Listen to them all over again. And ask yourself this important question. Since January till now, have I grown spiritually? What does that mean to me? What spiritual targets have I achieved? What spiritual transformations have taken place in my life? What divine activities can I engage now better than I used to do as of January uh, this year? We concluded by saying that it is time to sit up and assess your spiritual growth so far in this year because we are just about stepping to the final quarter of this year. This will help you to know whether you have grown spiritually and also know what you ought to do so that you can grow further or grow from the beginning. Shall we pray? Pray for yourself and pray for the entire body of Christ that the life and the spirit of these words will awaken all of us into this new state of assessing our spiritual growth. If only sons and daughters will assess their spiritual growth, They'll keep making so much progress and do better in the kingdom. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For the light, for the knowledge, for the understanding of divinity that is imparted to our spirits through these teachings. By these words and living particles, I translate and catapult your people to a state of a practice that will take them to their new level of maturity. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you have been watching us and you have not yet received Jesus, it is a beginning. This issue of receiving Christ is not to just satisfy your conscience and join a religion. It is divinely ordained that human beings will be transmuted into sons of God through Jesus. This was predestined before the first man was created. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, and Romans 8, 29 say these things. How can you become a son of God? Believe Jesus came into this world to die for the sins of the world. He rose again from the dead and ascended in heaven and is Lord over all. Declare his lordship over your life. And in the spirit, 
the Holy Ghost will breathe into you the life of God and that will regenerate you from a human into a son of God. And that will be a new life. If you don't have this happen in your life, say this with all your heart after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe with all my heart that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. Jesus, you are Lord of life. And I personally declare you today, Lord of my life. I am born again. Hallelujah. If you die with all your heart, truly, you are born again. We are surely going to meet in our next episode tomorrow of Jesus Stories. And we shall take this subject matter of self-assessment to another level. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwantan Takrade, Kaswa Lagon, Tachiman Tema Newtown, Ashama Newtown, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Inkonya, Kolegono Tree Speaking, Kolegono Gas Speaking, Kolegono English Speaking, the Multinationals Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pendant. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website, finalglobalmovement.org. Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.